This is BYU Sports Nation, presented by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU-TV and BYU-Radio. Now live from Studio B, your hosts, Jason Shepard and Kristen Kozlowski. BYU Sports Nation is live. We are your day-to-day play-by-play right here in Studio B, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Today is Thursday, April 7th, 2022. Thank you for tuning in. Great to have you with us. I'm Jason Shepard. Teamed up with Kristen Kozlowski, who's uh, more jealous of Jerem Jordan at Disneyland than Spencer Linton at the Masters. Look, it took eight and a half years. The show's been on eight and a half years, right? Yep, 2013. To get here, and the reason being Jerem's in Disneyland, Spencer's at the Masters. I would gladly switch places with Jerem at Disneyland. Dis- Disneyland has my heart. Look, you and I had this conversation yesterday, and uh, we had it with our producer, Ben Bagley, who thought we were kidding <laughs> when we both said, if given the choice... We would switch places with Jerem at Disneyland before we would switch places with Spencer Absolutely. at the Masters. I will take going. Look, I, I, I'm not golf guy. I, I, I never have been. It's just not of interest to me. Uh, so now it would be cool to go to the Masters because, you know, it's just one of those Experiences, places. It's, right? a, it's an experience. Right. However, even though I've been to Disneyland 15 plus times, and it's probably more, I don't even want to count. Uh, I would still prefer to go to Disneyland than the Masters. So you and I are right on the money with that. I think we are one of numerous Disney people in Utah that have held an annual pass before. And we talked about this, and Ben Bagley could not believe it. But you used to have annual passes to go to Disneyland because if you're going two to three times a year, even at most, it makes it worth it. Yeah, We, we we have four kids. When we had just the two, it was a little more cost effective. So we had it for probably at least two to three years, maybe even four, because we would go down three or four times during a year. And uh, obviously we, we got outpriced in terms of uh, the, the annual passes. But it actually got me really curious in terms of where this really would stand if we threw this out there to, to BYU Sports Nation. So we're actually going to do this. We're going to do a poll question. Where would you rather be right now? The Masters or at Disneyland. That's going to go up on social media, so I'm going to assume it's going to go up on Twitter at, uh, at BYU Sports Nation, maybe on Instagram as well. We are going to check this throughout the, uh, the show today. So over the next 58 minutes or so, I- I'm curious to find out exactly where people stand. What, what does your gut tell you? My gut tells me that there are going to be people that are going to be scared to say they want to go to Disneyland, and so out of peer pressure... <laughs> They're They're going to say say the the masters, masters. but they're lying to themselves. I I think in Utah alone, you have a lot of Disney people. (laughs) And, and it was apparent with Jerem. Jerem ran into Tom Homo. He's Tom running into other yes. BYU people since he's been there. I just think there's a lot of people that love the magic out there. They get away to the sunshine. A little easier to get to yeah. California. But prices being so high with travel right now, yeah. airlines, gas, it's a little harder for me to take my five children out. So we'll, we'll follow this throughout the show. Uh, but speaking of the show, let's get to today's lineup. We continue to look at the impact of the transfer portal. Is it the key for BYU athletics to be ready for the Big 12? Also, Kalani Satake, head coach of the football team, stopping by Studio B to recap spring football and then look ahead to the offseason. Also, spring soccer is underway. We talk with the head coach of the Cougars, Jennifer Rockwood. But first, let's bring on today's BYU Sports Nation headlines. Baseball back in action tonight as they host Santa Clara at Miller Park. Tonight's game will be live 8 Eastern on the BYU TV app and BYU Radio. Women's tennis faces off against San Francisco. The match will start at 2 p.m. Eastern time on the outdoor courts. Women's golf finishes 15th at the Silverado Showdown in Napa, California. And Neek Hakowitz was the top BYU individual finishing tight for 22nd at 6 over par. And Matt Harms and Elijah Bryant were both in action last night overseas. Matt Harms with 8 points and 3 rebounds in a loss. Elijah Bryant finished with 2 points, 3 rebounds, and 2 assists in an 81 to 76 victory. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. Your 
are talking about it, and so are we. It's what's trending on BYU Sports Nation. We have had a lot of discussions lately about the transfer portal, and for obvious reasons. First and foremost, it's become so prominent in college football and college basketball. And if you're one of those that fall into the camp that you really don't like what it's turned collegiate athletics into, I'm sorry to tell you that it's here to stay and probably will only become even more important. So with that in mind, BYU finds itself on the verge of joining the Big 12 and all athletic programs are right now in the process of trying to upgrade rosters to compete at the highest level in their new home. So the question, Kristen, is, is the transfer portal the key for BYU to be ready for the transition to the Big 12? Absolutely. I think hands down it is because you have to level up the depth of talent that you have on your team. BYU right now, one to two stars. They have to increase that depth of talent beyond those one to two stars and get six to seven, right, to be able to compete. I mean, we're going into an, an elite conference. If you look alone just at this year, let's just go off basketball in the NCAA tournament. WCC teams, three teams make it this year. For the Big 12, six teams make it. Right. And you have Kansas out of the conference winning the national title. Last year, Baylor won the national title. It's on a whole different ballpark in terms of the level that we are jumping up to across the board with the sports. You know, and and there's there's a short-term view of this and then a long-term view. And I think right now, because of the time that BYU has to get ready, I think it makes the transfer portal even more important than it ultimately would be at any normal time. Like, if you have four or five years to get ready for the jump, the transfer portal is still going to be important because it's a way that you can bring talent in. But in that scenario, you have more time to grow the players naturally in terms of bringing them in as a high school player. And obviously at BYU, you have missions that are involved. So it's a little bit longer process. But with such a short turnaround time, I really do think the transfer portal is the key. And it's, it's regardless of whether we're talking football, whether we're talking basketball, you know, both of these programs and all the rest in the athletic department essentially have one more season left. You know, baseball and softball are the only ones that, that are still finishing up their their two seasons left. Once once we get to June, all of the athletic uh, programs in the department are down to their last year in the WCC or in the case of football and independent. So when, when you're trying to find those guys that can help bolster your rosters going into this upgraded conference, I think because of the short time frame, it has to be the transfer portal. Now, ultimately, and I, I've said this uh, the last couple of days as well, ultimately what you hope is if you're utilizing the transfer portal, you know, you're getting guys for more than a season or sure. two. You're maybe getting them a little bit earlier in their career. You're still utilizing the transfer portal, but you're getting more out of them. Right now, though, most of the transfer portal players and the need for them is for a year or two if you can get it. So right now, I, I really do think it is the key. Even if they come in for one year, uh, one year and done, right? But they're starter ready. That's going to help, absolutely help the depth of the roster. I mean, you look at players like Alex Barcelo, who out of high school, he's recruited, goes to Arizona, wasn't happy there, sits on the bench for a couple years, comes to BYU and is absolutely the key player the last couple years for BYU and took them to a different level of competitiveness. In the WCC, he was, he was one of the top guys. A first team pick on the all conference team and comes in and then Tijon Lucas, who I mean, he went to three different schools to right. finally get to BYU. So there there's gonna be different scenarios and guys that are going to be more of your longevity guys. And and this is something that Greg Rubel said yesterday in an interview. I think he thought BYU's going after the longevity guys. I think you have to have a mixture of it. Because if you come across a guy that's a good fit to come in and be a one and done guy, but he can help you that year, yeah, you're you're not gonna pass on that. Well, and, and look, staying with with basketball, BYU, and we had Chris Burgess on the show. We ran the soundbite again yesterday. You know, we talked about casting a wide net, and he says, you know, they're looking at 15 to 20 guys in the transfer portal. Now, obviously, you know, you're hoping to get two or three, but, I mean, you also have to realize that even though there are a couple of guys that have, have, have put themselves in the transfer portal on the current roster, you know, uh, Hunter Erickson and Nate Hansen, and Jeremy Dowdell, you've got guys that are coming back from missions that are going to take some of those spots. So you have Tanner Toulson that's coming back. You have Dallin Hall that's coming back. Richie Saunders coming back to this roster. So you're going to have an influx of guys that have been recruited by this staff that are coming in. But it's, you know, 
I, I think you're probably looking at, because the two biggest needs are point guard and five, those are going to come out of the transfer portal. And I think that uh, what backs that up, when you see the names of the guys that BYU uh, basketball is being linked to, they're either fives or ones. They're point guards or big men. So I, I think that that's, and again, I said it, if, if this is an aspect of the collegiate sports that you're not a fan of, unfortunately, it's just reality these days, and it's not going anywhere. It is not going anywhere, and you have to embrace it at this point and pull the positive out of it because there's pros and cons to everything. I was talking to Melanie Day yesterday. We were going back and forth on text message, and I, I really wanted to just see what's your opinion of the transfer portal. Do you like it? What? And she said it was hands down the most talked about thing at the Final Four when she went to the Final Four on the women's side. And she just said there's a lot of buzz around it, trying to figure out the systems, trying to figure out how we recruit players and what's the best strategy, what types of players do we go after. And BYU is a little bit more limited, right, because they're going after a certain targeted audience or a certain targeted athlete, rather. And you have to have a kid that's going to come in that will respect the honor code, that will respect academics, a certain level of academics. And so a little bit more limited. And she just said it's very interesting because you can spend three to four years recruiting a kid out of high school. Yeah. And you can spend one week and land a kid out of the portal. She said it's a lot of work. The portal's a lot of work. But sometimes it can, you know, for that smaller risk of recruiting a kid for a shorter period of time, you can land someone. Well, and the other side of this, Kristen, is, look, it's not just BYU looking at guys to bring in. It's also... You know, people that are on BYU's rosters right now possibly looking for other options. And that's a part of this as well. So, look, and, and from the football standpoint, you know, BYU's had players that have entered the portal. Uh, on the football side, you know, Kalani has, has mentioned this a couple of times. You know, if guys go into the portal, he obviously wants the best for them and helps them. But if it doesn't work out and they want to come back, he'll welcome them back with open arms. So, you know, that, that's a part of this as well. You know, it's... It's just, it is really over the last two or three years, it has become such a pivotal part in roster building. And it's not just recruiting high school players. It's not just going out and looking for guys in the transfer portal. You, you have to recruit your own guys year to year. And it's just changed the way coaches recruit because it's, it's so prominent now. Well, that's what I love about Kalani is he is the type of coach that's going to welcome these kids back because it's a hard process as an athlete to figure out the best fit for you. And sometimes you go to a school and it may not be the best fit. You right. may not be happy. So you think, oh, there's grass. The grass is greener on the other side. Let me put my name in the portal. That doesn't mean that you're going to get what you think you're going to get, that you're going to get more heavily recruited out of high school in the portal. Yeah. That's that's not always how it's going to be, right? And so it's a big risk for these athletes to put their name in there, to be out there in the portal, and it may or may not pay off. Let's get to our question of the day. Is the transfer portal the key for BYU to be ready for the transition to the Big 12? Let's hear from you in Voice of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. First response, old school BYU on Twitter says, BYU's recruiting cycle is much longer than other schools due to missions. Without the transfer portal, we could be waiting three or four years for someone to make an impact, or four to five years sometimes. <laughs> I added that last part in. Uh, to, when we need it immediately, we will need to strike a balance between immediate needs and future needs. I mean, it's spot on. And, and honestly, I think that's where... Your, the, your program has to have the guys that you recruit from high school and you bring them in, whether it's football, basketball, women's soccer, softball, doesn't matter. Bringing those players in, you've got to have them on your roster. But the portal allows you to go look for an immediate need if you have it. And, you know, with the number of players that are putting themselves in the portal, there are certainly options out there if that's what you're looking for. You, you don't want to build your program around the portal, right? Right. But you do need to suffice some of those missing pieces. And we saw that with football this year. We've seen it with basketball side. Uh, going back-to-back 10-win -back seasons, they needed some of those transfers. Right. Sa same thing with Utah and Utah State and winning their respective conferences. You have to have some of those transfers out of the portal to help put together the puzzle and some of those missing pieces. Now, as we mentioned, those longevity players, you hope that the high school players will be the ones that will stay in the program and keep building the program. All right, let's update you on our poll question. Uh, this is... This is prob will probably surprise some how close it actually is. So where would you rather be right now? And we're doing this because Spencer Linton is at the Masters. 
Jerem Jordan is at Disneyland. So where would you rather be right now, the Masters or Disneyland? The Masters has the advantage, but not significantly. 53.6% for the Masters. Uh, ben Bagley pumping his fist because he doesn't want to live in a world where more people would want to go to Disneyland than the Masters. Uh, it's Mickey or Tiger, right? It's true. It, it, it's true. Uh, Disneyland with 46.4%. Uh, we will uh, continue to update this as we continue through the show. Coming up, is BMIU more likely to have a Major League Baseball All-Star or a Masters champion sooner? And Kalani Satake joining us next to recap spring. Look, there he is. And look ahead to the fall. This is BYU Sports Nation. I wonder if he'd rather be at Augusto or Anaheim. On the basic level, we offer transportation. We carry four wheels, tailgates, and a place to rest your rump. Beyond that, we provide adventures, opportunities, and jobs well done. So perhaps our favorite offering is our full line of trucks, including the new Nissan Titan. Right off I-15, Tim Daly Nissan Southtown and the popular full-size Nissan Titan. Think Nissan. Think Tim Daly. Luxurious blanket. Getting cozy with family and friends. A gift for everyone. Minky Couture, official luxury blanket of BYU Athletics. Accidents don't just happen nine to five, they happen when you least expect them. The team at Siegfried and Jensen is here for you 24 7, nights, weekends, every day every hour really here for you no matter when you call us you'll speak to a real person and have access to the same expertise and personal attention as always and get the legal help you need when you need it nights weekends every day every hour 24 7. learn more at siegfriedandjensen.com new town new house this is our new life it's arthur spiderwick his daughter she said her father was abducted by Berries. Upstairs, there's a desk and a chest. I found this book. Ah! What is that? What's out there? Why are they doing this? What do they want from us? The book! BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Baseball returns home tonight to host WCC foes Santa Clara. Jason Shepard and Gary Scheide will be on the call at 8 Eastern. Watch live on the BYU TV app. Yeah, big series for BYU baseball taking on the Santa Clara Broncos. We are live in Studio B for your day-to-day -day BYU sports play-by-play -play alongside the lovely Kristen Kozlowski. My name is Jason Shepard, and uh, we're going to try something today. It did not work out well yesterday because Dave McCann refused uh, to turn uh, the, well, basically, he turned what was supposed to be a duet into a solo with our uh, countdown. But uh, we are now officially under 150 days to the season opener for BYU football, so hit it. Countdown to the Bulls. 149. 149 days. We nailed it. Nailed it. Thank you for not pulling Dave McCann and I, leaving me hanging and duets. singing it myself. I love duets. All right, I appreciate that. Uh, and joining us now, who I'm sure loves a duet now and then, <laughs> is the head coach of the BYU Cougars. He is Kalani Satake joining us in Studio B. Coach, it's good to see you. Good to see you guys. I, I almost joined in. Oh, you should have. A little, a trio? a little bit of bass. There we go. Yeah, we could have done that. That would have been bad we, timing. <laughs> we, we need more practice next. Yeah, time. see, he doesn't have the he doesn't have the music in his ear, so he didn't he didn't know when it started. Otherwise, he probably would have uh, joined in. Let's get to the real question. Uh, the poll question today was uh, with with Spencer at the Masters, Jerem at Disneyland. You have the choice of going to Augusta or Anaheim. Which are you choosing? Well, I mean, my family and I were going to Disney on Friday, so. <laughs> So you actually are going yeah, to Disney. We decided to do a quick Disney trip um, spring break, and so, uh, yeah, that's where we're headed. But uh, I don't think you can go wrong either way. 
to me, it's all about food. And I heard the food's really <laughs> oh, good at Augusta yeah. and it's yeah. really good at Disney, so can't complain. And uh, I, I think the, the perfect week would be going to Disney the first week and then end the end of the week at Augusta. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Have you ever been to Augusta, by the way? No, I, but I heard the food's great. Yes. That's all I care about. I mean, <laughs> it, you know, I mean I'd mean, i love to see Tony play and, and Mike and, and, uh, and, uh, and Tiger, obviously. But, yeah, I, I heard the... Uh, Egg salad sandwiches really good and stuff mm. like that. I'm, I like weird stuff. That's why the, you'll see me at Disney and BYU fans. If you see me this weekend, I'll probably have a drumstick and a corn dog. A little turkey leg. Oh, you mm -hmm. you get into the churros? Yeah, sometimes. Oh, that's my favorite. The yeah. churros are my yeah. favorites. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm more about the, 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 the protein and the carbs. There you go. <laughs> the chur churros are carbs, so maybe I'll give it a shot. A good balance. Yeah. Good balance. Yeah. What, yeah. Once you throw the kids in the mix, it changes everything, right? You, you have yeah. to think about the kids and how they light up with the magic. That's where <laughs> I'm at. I've got five kids and, and going there. So for your kids, how much do they enjoy Disneyland? Yeah, they love it. And, and you know, we have a, a, an incoming baby uh, in July, and so it's the last chance to go on, uh, you know, after this, after this uh, in July, we're, the, the ride's going to be changed a little bit. And yep. Probably, I'm, I'm probably around that age, and my wife and I to go on the teacups a little bit more after this. Oh but my uh, don't but take her now. Don't no, take no. Her now. I mean, yeah. I'm going to be the one that has, has to go on these crazy rides. That <laughs> yep. you know, but uh, it's it's for the kids, and, and I, I'm really excited. Uh, this week, our staff gets to hang out with their with their families uh, during spring break, and really really enjoy the you know. So far, we're we're midway, but I'm really excited for the rest of the weekend and, and just enjoy the time with my family. Well, and you guys wrapped up spring football, wrapped it up. By all accounts, it was a success. You guys had the alumni game, which is still being talked about. is just an unbelievable experience. What are your overall thoughts on spring football now that you've had a little bit of time to digest it? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm really happy with, with our, our team and where we're at right now. And, and uh, I think uh, the excitement is that spring ball is over with, which means we're that much closer to, to the game and to the season. So, uh, you know, we, we, we improved in a lot of areas and – um, I, I saw a team start, start to grasp its identity, see the leadership forming, and, and uh, really pleased with our coaches and our players and the way they approach spring. And then, you know, to end it with the alumni game was amazing. And we're, we're trying to find ways to make it even better next time. And uh, the, the alumni, they promised me that they would be better next year. So <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know. I think maybe there's a way that, you know, what's interesting is we knew that it would be um, a lot of fun. But we didn't know it was going to be as competitive. But that's what happens when you get BYU fans into the stadium and you bring these guys that have played on, on that field. The competitiveness just takes over. I know soccer does something that's similar where they play the alumni alumni game. And so we're, um, we want to see how we can improve, make this uh, even better than what it is. And maybe our current players want to be a part of it too. So we'll see if we can uh, you know, make, the, make the best of all of it and try to make it an even better experience for everybody. I really liked what you said in talking about all of these alumni feeling like they have a home and they're welcome here and don't feel out of place. Uh, but the one thing that stood out to me is when you talked about recruiting and how they can help you with recruiting. Mm -hmm. Explain that a little bit more. Well, I think that when you graduate, nobody tells you what the game plan is. And so I thought, well, it might be good because I, you know, I graduated and then it felt a little awkward. And sure. when I graduated, it was Lavelle's last year. And so all of a sudden it's a new regime and you didn't know how to approach alumni events or even games. And so, and you go through this, a little bit of withdrawal, not being able to be on the field. And so um, this highly competitive person, I mean, myself and other alumni did, there's still something that they want to compete with. And, and I think um, what's better than telling your own story, uh, your experiences at BYU and the growth that you made from a young person into an adult. And, um, and we have a great retention rate with with uh, recruits that come on campus when they meet our our current players and they meet uh, the fans. And so um, there, there's these walking testimonials that are out there in the world, and um, let's get them involved. And so I think easy, the easy thing to say, hey, we still need you. We want you to be involved in everything that we do. And they, uh, I think there's a, there's a good chance for us to collaborate and get ideas from alumni and then see how we can Im improve recruiting the, with the transfer portal. Uh, happening and, and it seems to be uh, very popular. It'd be very important for us to get it right the first time, so we don't have to lean on the transfer portal to uh, to fill out our roster. Let's focus on some specifics of spring football. Let's start on the offensive side. Uh, overall thoughts on how Jaron played, uh, and then just the offense in general. Yeah, uh, Jaron was extremely efficient. Uh, we know that he he makes 
good decisions when he when he has the, the football in his hands and uh, you know, we saw a lot of that in the spring, but what I like about um, him being able to see how uh, Zach played is that uh, he knows when to take some chances, and in practice, that's where I want to see all the mistakes. And so I, I don't really worry about mistakes being made in practices. If, you, if you're able to see any of our practices, you'll probably say, well, man, there's a lot of mistakes everywhere. Exactly, that's where you're supposed to make the mistakes, and I'd rather them show up in practice than they, than they will in the games on Saturdays. But... With Jaron, he's so extra careful with the ball that um, he's not making the first time throw in the game. He's done that many times, and and he's 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 given it a shot and tried different things. And that's a, a little bit of what Zach did for us. Was Zach tried all these quirky throws and these weird plays, and um, Jaron is just is right in line with him. I, I think these quarterbacks they're they're a different breed, you know. So I uh, they they want to be able to make decisions and and find different ways to do things. And uh, Jaron's starting to really come into his own and, and, and make that offense his. And so uh, that's taking taking place. And you have Jacob Conover that's seeing it, Kate Finnegan, Nick Phillips, and, and Soljay. All those guys are doing a great job. And, and I, I can, um, you know, probably give a lot of well, all the credit to A-Rod. He's done a great job managing the offense and especially running that quarterback room. As you look at the other side of the ball and your defense, what did you like, what you saw this spring and how they're looking? Yeah, a young group, and you know we had a, we were hit by a bunch of injuries last year. But the the benefit and the positive part about it is that they were able to just kind of get their feet wet with with the experience. And so we have a lot of experience returning. Um, and then when those injured guys become healthy, we're going to be a really good team. And and then it helps going against a really good offense every day, uh, specifically at, at the line of scrimmage. So our, what better way to get our D line ready than to, to have them go against some big behemoths up front and um, the competition itself should make us better. Talking with the head football coach of the BYU Cougars, Kalani Satake here on BYU Sports Nation. So when spring ends, what's the ask of the players? What do you ask of them over the next couple of months before things start ramping back up when we get closer to fall camp? Well, we give them time off. I mean, that, that's the NCAA allows you to have a certain amount of time that you can require them to be here to work out. Um, and so we'll give them most of April off to, to focus on finals and then figure out some things on, on what they want to do, um, you know, individually. And uh, all our guys are still in town. They're still working out every day. Um, but it gets them to focus on some specialized training if they want to do that. Uh, our our coaches aren't allowed to meet with them and or, or to, to train them, but um, it gives them a chance to train themselves and, and be around each other. The, the peer-to-peer learning is something that's really part of our our culture, and, and, and that's a big part of why our guys are able to retain information and really become better is, is that their their expectations and the standards set by their, their peers and their, their teammates. Where do you hope to see the biggest improvement in this team? As you look at 2021, what you were able to do, a, success, a successful season, and then now to the fall of 2022, where do you hope the biggest improvement will be made? Well, you know, we had um, Coach Andy Reid with us a couple weeks ago for the, the coaches clinic, and he was able to spend some time with the players and the team and, and really focus on, on uh, what allows you to be your best self. And uh, he gave us some good insight. And I think for, for us, for me, I just want to see our guys stay humble and keep working hard, you know, and not worry about uh, anything. That there's, there's, there's a goal in, 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 in their mind that they want to accomplish and uh, to not allow any distractions get in the way. And that's, that's the um, feedback they got from Coach Reed. So, uh, it makes sense to, to keep – I'm going to double down on that. The guy's one of the best coaches in, in the game today, and, and, and so we're going to definitely do what we can to, to follow suit and give the, the recommendation that he gave to our players. I want to make sure that we keep emphasizing that. Speaking of alumni, I mean, obviously, you know, Coach Reed is one of the best ever to be in the NFL, head coach, Super Bowl, is going to go into the Hall of Fame. You've mentioned how you, you obviously have a direct line to him. What, what, is, what is that like, not only to hear about his love for BYU and how much he promotes it, but to be able to pick his brain if you ever need it? Yeah, I, I really enjoy that, that relationship that, that he's been so open just to, hey, whatever you need. I, I, I want to make sure to respect it still. And, and you know, I, I think I'm trying to keep it as professional as possible. But... Um, Lavelle's not around anymore, and, and he's he's the closest thing to Lavelle that I know. And then, um, but I, I've been able to, you know, to reach out to a lot of people that have been that are that love BYU, and it's not just specific to football. I, I think there's a there's a good number of people and alumni and, and that love BYU, and and uh, I'd be crazy not to 
dip into those so that that talent and that expertise you know to help me out and so there's a lot of correlation from their leadership and whatever where there's companies that they're running or what they're doing in their professional life that carries over could really help me and i'm trying to learn as much as i can all right you mentioned disneyland that's what's coming mm -hmm. up this weekend you got a brand new baby coming this summer right. what what else are you planning this off season for you and your family well i mean we're really excited about about this this year and this season and and uh you know i think the the surprise of the baby is really exciting for all of us and, and for my children. And I mean, there's going to be a 12 year gap between our youngest, our son and, and, and this baby girl coming along the way. So figuring out the name is going to be the key. And then, um, and then just, I mean, I'll take any, any, uh, name, my wife, Timberly and I would, would love to hear whatever ideas you guys have for names, but you don't need to make a poll about it, but we're just going <laughs> to, Hey, a poll might be good though. It might help yeah. you more than you realize. Hey, but, my daughter's Maya. I love the name Maya. So I'm going to throw that out there. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, the, the definitely not going to be named Taysom because it's a baby okay. girl, right? So yeah. I know that that, <laughs> that name has been really popular in the last decade. But I, I think the yeah, we're, we're just going to spend a lot of time together as a family. Uh, I think the um, and then just have them be involved in all the excitement of this season. I mean, there's we're going into the season and everyone's talking about 23 and the Big 12, but uh, this season deserves a lot of attention and excitement. And I I think uh, you know getting the family involved and, and our coaches are. are our staff having their families involved. We're going to try to make this thing as, as family uh, family oriented, oriented as we can. Well, it's uh, 149 days away, and uh, I think I speak for everybody when I say we cannot wait for the football season to uh, to get here. Coach, thank you for stopping by. Uh, always appreciate uh, you coming by and talking some football, and enjoy Disneyland this weekend. Yeah. It's good to see you guys. Thanks, Shep. You Chris, bet. Good to enjoy see you on board. Churro. Go get that churro. I'm going to eat a lot, and um, eat a churro have for a lot me. of fun. I love yeah. the churro. So. <laughs> We'll, we'll be thinking about you. <laughs> okay, thanks. I'll, I'll take a picture of the churro and send it oh, to you guys. There we go. Yeah, That's what yeah, we yeah. like. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, Coach. Go Cougs. Well, coming up, BYU soccer is about to wrap up their spring as well. Head coach Jennifer Rockwood will join us. And Boise State has a big announcement today. At least that's what they put out there. What do we think it is? That's coming up. This is BYU Sports Nation. the heat getting set for success demonstrating their drive but when their blood and sweat turns to tears or anything else we lay the groundwork for BYU's athletes to hit the ground running again and you as well Intermountain Healthcare official medical provider for BYU athletics I don't think I've ever turned on anything from BYU TV and not found myself smiling. I think it's just really inspiring just seeing people help one another. It helps me show my kids good examples of the way that we should live. I really like Studio C because we can all laugh together. It's actually something that makes us reconnect and brings us closer to our family. I love BYU TV. <laughs> BYU Sports Nation is brought to you by Marisk, enabling global trade for a growing world. She is Kristen, I am Jason, and this is BYU Sports Nation. To interact with the show and get great content throughout the day, follow us on our social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. I want to thank uh, head coach Kalani Sitake for stopping by. It's always great to talk to. In the meantime, let's whip it. Cougar Whip Around, presented by Marisk, your integrated container logistics company, enabling global trade for a growing world. 
Well, the University of San Diego announced the hire of former UCLA and St. John's head coach Steve Levine as the new head man for the Toreros. What does this mean for WCC hoops? Uh, first of all, it's another name. Over the last couple of years, you've had some, like, you know, you had Damon Stoudemire that right. came in and was at Pacific for a while. You know, you, you've got some names that have come into the conference. Um, I, I think it's probably a good hire. Obviously, I, I will remember him more from UCLA than I will yeah, from St. Right. John's. Yep. Uh, but he certainly has the the name values in California for sure. It's probably a good hire. But at the end of the day, here's what I here's what I think. BYU's only in it for one more year. So at the end of the day, I don't really care that much. One more WCC Just one more year. year that you're going to care. Beyond I, that, I don't care. I think it's a great hire. I think you bring in a guy at UCLA in his seven years there. He went to the Elite Eight in the first year yeah. and then four Sweet Sixteens. Yeah. So he's got the experience to come in. He's, he's the, a big name. He's been a broadcaster sure. as well. I think it's a good hire. Still got the good slick back hair. Yes, yes. Absolutely. Doing the Pat Riley style. All right. This one is interesting to me. Uh, Boise State Athletics promised an announcement today about, quote, where they go next. So they tweeted this out yesterday saying the announcement was coming tomorrow. I have uh, specifically followed them on Twitter. I was not following them before, but I'm, I'm waiting to see whatever this announcement is. But here's what I want to do. I want you to predict what the announcement will be with wrong answers only. Wrong answers. Wrong answers okay. only on what the I'm, announcement I'm gonna will be. I'm going to bring this out okay. one more time. Oh, boy, there it is. And the mascot is changing to Spuddy Buddy. You see him? Get a good glimpse of that. Yep. I thought that was the mascot already. Is that not? Is that not the case? Okay. We're going to just leave this guy. Okay, that one's not bad. I, okay. I have two that I'm choosing from. I don't know which one. I'll, maybe I'll let you decide which one you think is probably more realistic. Uh, one, I think the announcement could be they're changing the school song to Blue from Eiffel 65. You know what song I'm talking about? Yes, I do. Okay, all right. Or this one I'm kind of leaning to. They're creating a new football-only conference that features only schools with colored turf fields. So that would include oh. Boise State, obviously, uh, Coastal Carolina with the teal field, and then Eastern Washington with the red field. So, like, they're going to try and combine their forces and do a, a colored turf field conference only. Okay. I got one more. Oh, okay. They're, they're going to replace BYU and the WCC. Okay. And the football and independent. Indi they're going to just go. follow Same BYU. Thing. The the Cougars were the trailblazers. They're yep. going to follow right. Look, yep. there are a lot of people that think it is some sort of a conference affiliation announcement. I, I don't know. It could be an NIL deal. Right. It could be that they're re-upping with a certain sponsor. Who knows? All I know is that t stuff, especially if it's big news, typically leaks out because you've got so many people right. across the there's country, not just locally, but across the country that, that hear about this stuff. And there's not been a peep in terms of what this is from any of those. So I'm really curious to find out what this turns out to Very be. Very interesting. All right. Which will happen first? BYU will have another Masters champ or a Major League Baseball star? Uh, like, like an all-star? Major League Baseball all-star? Yes, all-star. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go, I will say a Masters champ probably happens first. And obviously the, the last Masters champ for came from a BYU Cougar was Mike Weir back in 2003. He's obviously there. The BYU golf team is really, really good. And there are some guys that are going to be in that position over the next couple of years. So I, I'm going to say right now it's the Masters champ. Because right now there's only one uh, former Cougar in the majors, and it's Correct. Michael Rucker, who um, was a starting pitcher at BYU, but now is a relief pitcher. He'll come out of the bullpen for the Chicago Cubs. He is on the opening day roster. But right now I'll say Masters champ. We do have some in the minors. So yeah, you, did, so there, you right? do have several in the minors. Uh, yes. And I will agree with you on this one. I think Mike Weir is our best option right now for this to happen again. In 2003, he was the Masters champion. So why not again? Uh, all right, let's check our poll question. Uh, the question we're asking, where would you rather be right now, the Masters or Disneyland? Uh, and we're not we're, we're taking out the fact that Spencer's at the Masters and Jerem is at Disneyland. We're just going with the locations only. And I'm going to be honest. I am I think we need to have somebody an independent uh, entity check the the percentage results because I think Ben is skewing too. this. Uh, the Masters right now is at 58.1, Disneyland at 41.9. It, that gap I'm is not getting wider. It. It's getting wider. I, I think it is much closer than what these numbers are and showing. And really, it should be closer knowing that Kalani just said that they're going to Disneyland. I think so that would skew it just a If we bit. checked for hanging chads, do we need to, is there any, do we need to double check any of this? So anyway, that's our poll question. We'll, uh, we'll update it before we wrap up the show in about 20 minutes. 
All right, coming up, a BYU tradition unlike any other. Yeah, you're not going to want to miss that. And speaking of things you're not going to want to miss, we talk with the head coach of BYU women's soccer, Jennifer Rockwood. There she is. Spring soccer underway, wrapping things up with the doubleheader on Saturday. We'll get into all that next. This is BYU Sports Nation. I know what it's like to be overlooked, to be doubted, to fly under the radar. I only had one offer coming out of high school, but I was ready for every moment, every opportunity, and every shot that I got. Now I'm playing professional basketball, aiming to be one of the best shooters on the planet. And I'm just getting started. Be ready for your moment with Rapid Reboot, the future of rapid recovery. When my grandfather started this company in 1947, he couldn't have envisioned what we would ultimately become. We realized that our value to our customers is that we will be there day after day, year after year, doing whatever we need to to find solutions to the challenges that they face. We are committed to be honestly better in all that we do, in every opportunity that we have to serve our customers. Hi, Spencer Linton here letting you know when your company joins the BYU team as a corporate partner, your brand can be featured in sports programming on BYU TV and BYU Radio. In addition to all of the great games, you can be part of the BYU Coaches Shows, place your message in Countdown to Kickoff, basketball pre- and post-game shows, and each weekday on BYU Sports Nation. We invite your team to join ours and become a corporate sponsor of BYU Athletics. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today. On the next relative race, hearts are heavy with the elimination of Team Green. And the competitive pressure causes go, go, go. our remaining teams to crumble. Go, go, go! But with the grace of a golden ticket, Angie finally meets the relative she's always wanted. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Tomorrow is a doubleheader for BYU softball as they host LMU in a matchup of the top two WCC contenders. You can watch the games live on BYU TV and the app beginning at 7 Eastern tomorrow night. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. We are live from Studio B. Jason Shepard, Kristen Kozlowski with you and happy to have the head coach of BYU Women's Soccer, Jennifer Rockwood, joining us here in Studio B. Coach, it's good to see you. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. It's, uh, it is our pleasure. And uh, oh, ho-hum, another year you lose two, you know, two of your top scores. Spring's underway and you're 7-0-1. Oh, uh, I was telling you in the break, there are certain teams on campus I just expect to, to win every game regardless of the situation. Soccer's one of them. And here we go again. Good start to spring. Yeah, we, we you know obviously had such a fantastic fall and graduated some amazing seniors. But, you know, we returned a lot of good, experienced players, uh, returned seven starters. And what was unique about this spring season is we had seven freshmen graduate early. Just they were so excited to get on campus and start training with us. So, um, you know, they've got in eight games already as a new freshman that should still be seniors in high school. So uh, that adds a lot to our development and getting ready for next fall. You're coming off a national championship match last year, a, a fun season and just a lot of success, losing two key players, obviously, but what, what's the expectation for next year's season in this team? You know, uh, every year you kind of reevaluate, but uh, we're just ready to go. I mean, we expect to win a conference championship. We expect to be back in the NCAA tournament, and I don't think there's any reason why we can't anticipate and expect to, to go as far as we did. Um, like I mentioned, we have a lot of good returning, experienced players, some great leaders on our team. Um, you know, we graduated our two captains, but now we have Natalie Wells and Jamie Shepard, who, who are kind of leading the crew, but so, so much great experience. Um, we're shifting people around in some different positions. Um, and they've already had a chance to play uh, in, in those positions this spring. And I'm uh, just really, really looking forward to it. It's a good vibe, a lot of fun. Love our new freshmen, fun personalities, tremendous soccer players. And they've just been able to fit right in. 
Who are some of the the new players? Because as you mentioned, you know, there are a lot of players that were young but got experience as starters. And I mm-hmm. honestly, I think that's one of the things that that I admire most about what you do because it doesn't always happen this way. Even with teams that you've had a lot of veteran players on, you've mm-hmm. always found opportunities for the young players to not just get minutes but mm-hmm. some meaningful minutes, and it's always paid off. Mm-hmm. So who are some of those players but also some of the new faces that, that fans that follow the, the soccer team should be paying attention to? Yeah, you know what we, as I mentioned, Natalie Wells, um, you know, she came off the bench for us, but we anticipate her to be taking in Grace Johnson's slot as a center back. She's our captain now, and having her in lava on the back line, we return the rest of our back line. Um, you know, we'll have someone like a, uh, a Rachel a McCarthy who you know came off the bench for us the last two years and has scored a, a lot of goals. Um, we see her in the starting lineup up top, you know, trying to replace some of those goals that Cameron Tucker scored for us. And, you know, moving Jamie Shepard from our six to our 10, kind of taking over the role of Kayla Coulihan. And so she's been able to get some good experience. It's a very different position um, with lots of different responsibilities, but as one of our, our top returning players, I think she'll fit right in and, and do a great job there. So. And we talk a lot with basketball and football about the jump to the Big 12. One more season to go, and then Mm -hmm. we're there, and it's coming quick. Mm -hmm. So with soccer, as you look at the key factors to help you make that jump, what are some of the things that stand out for you in this team? Yeah, well, we're fortunate to play in the WCC, which is a a very good uh, conference for women's soccer, with Santa Clara winning the national championship the the year before last. And three of us, us, Santa Clara and Pepperdine, finishing the top 15 this year, and as we you know, played Santa Clara in the semifinals. So um, our conference continues to get better, uh, probably top to bottom, the most competitive our conference has been. So we'll have one more year to really prepare us for that. We've got a great non-conference schedule. We always play a very nationally competitive um, non-conference schedule. So, you know, we anticipate being able to be ready for, for the Big 12 in, in 2013. And, you know, same expectations will follow us when we go into the new conference. When do you expect to have the schedule final Finalized and and done to and you know released. When do you expect that to be? Um, you know that's something they're sorting out. I think with all of the teams mm-hmm. right now, we've seen some um, kind of samples of of how it'll work. Not who will play. It doesn't seem like we'll play everybody uh, in the conference. And soccer usually just play you know home right. home not home and away. Um, you know so we'll wait and see. But uh, we're just really excited. For that to, to kind of play some new teams we've played a lot of those teams in the conference right. in the past and tcu has done the best in women's soccer the and most recently and you know they're they're old conference uh opponents of ours from back in the mountain west days all right your final two matches of spring season this weekend you've got uvu and suu what do you want to see out of your team as you wrap up spring yeah just a constant building and development i, th- I think we've gotten better uh, with each of our weekends, we're allowed to play five days, and we've played two games, which is tough to do. But again, with the addition of new freshmen and a bigger roster, it's been great for us. Um, but uh, just just do a little bit better than what we've done this last week. We've played tough games. We've played, I think, four Pac-12 teams this spring, and have had great results there. And you know, U- uh, UVU is always a tough game for us. A lot of local girls, a rivalry that certainly goes on. Uh, we didn't get to play them this fall, so I-, I think it'll be a great game, and people can come out and watch us on Saturday and see some new faces. You uh, you are BYU women's soccer. You're an institution here on <laughs> campus, and the success obviously speaks for itself. I'm curious as you go into your 27th season what still drives you um i think just naturally i'm a very competitive person i'd like to win um like to figure out ways to win like to certainly help our our players find uh ways to be their very best and and trying to just get the most out of your team and and i I just love the challenge of uh, every season every fall season you know you, you have a new group a new group of freshmen to develop and and welcome in and Um, You know, as I mentioned, I'm fortunate to have some amazing young women uh, on our team. I have an unbelievable staff, uh, a lot of fun to be around. And so just enjoy my time with the team. And, and, uh, you know, you work hard and you play hard. You expect to win and good things happen. We talked to football with Kalani Sataki about uh, the alumni game last week and how that was a big success. But I want to talk to you about your alumni and watching what they've been able to do. Players like Ashley Hatch and Michaela Coulihan and Cam Tucker. So you follow them throughout their careers at BYU and you see the success. You're able to celebrate in that. And then for them to go on and do so well playing professionally. And those are just a few players that have done it. But what does that mean for the program? 
um, it's just so fun to, to see uh, them go to that next level. Um, and certainly it, it helps our program in the sense that it kind of sets a standard that if players come in and, and have that dream and have that desire to play at the next level, then it's certainly an option for them. The exposure that they get, uh, we've proven to develop our players that are, are ready to go to the next level. Um, and so I think that does a lot for our younger players. We've also had players that are ready to play at that level and just decided not to sure. and good for them too. But, um, you know, they're great examples for our players. It's fun. Ashley's in a, at another national camp right now getting ready for the U.S. women to play. Um, and Cam and Kayla are, are having their first experience of professional athletes. And Kayla's uh, played a lot of minutes in the games uh, so far with Orlando. And and so, yeah, I think it just uh, opens those doors for, for future players to do that if that's something they want to do. Uh, we were asking Kalani about off-season plans now that their spring is done. Once mm -hmm. the spring season is done, what – what, what do you ask of your players as you go into the offseason, and what are you wanting to see from them before you regroup in the summer and get ready then for the season in August? Yeah, we'd like them to take a little break. We've had a, a demanding year, um, and so we want to take a little break, and they'll start up their summer workout programs in May. Um, we do a lot of summer camps, a lot of summer soccer camps, so it's a great opportunity for them to be here on campus, so working camps. Um, and uh, training together. So most of all the girls will be back in town, usually June and July. And so they're together working out and, and training. Obviously, we can't do a lot with them. Um, but because they wear camps, you know, I get to be around them. And that's a lot of fun uh, to be with them all summer. And then we'll get ready to start. We're usually the first team that gets going that first week of August. And uh, we get to open with North Carolina at Chapel Hill. So something to really look forward to. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, OK, we've asked the question here today. And we're asking, you know, those watching Disneyland or or the Masters? What would you pick? I'd have to say the Masters. I've, I've never okay. been, okay. Um, and I think that'd be fantastic. I've been to Disney World uh, several times, so I, I'm going to go with the Masters. The new. Okay. Going somewhere yeah. new. Yeah. Right, and you you have something there. Yeah, so I just like to, every time I come up here, I see this great picture <laughs> oh of, my gosh. Classic. Of, of Greg Rebell. <laughs> I think as a teenager. What, what and was I just, he there, 13? I just we wanted to show 13. this so that he can, you know, say hi. Uh, Greg and our good buddies, he travels with us, so yeah, fun oh, memories. Yeah. He may be up in his office right now, cringing. <laughs> He'll be loving yeah. that, right? Yeah, he will. Love it. Coach, it's always great to see you. Thank Can't you. wait for the season to be here. Thanks for stopping by. All right, thanks, guys. All right, coming up, rise and shout to our Masters champ. And the Masters isn't the only tradition unlike any other. The Cougars have one, too. This is BYU Sports Nation. Trio Orem Senior Living believes in empowering seniors to live life to the fullest. We help eliminate stress out of daily life when you live at Trio. Less time focusing on housework means you can socialize at one of our many events with safety in mind, of course. And did we mention our spacious apartments with modern amenities? Learn more about setting up a private tour at TrioOrem.com. Familiar with the BYU TV app? Yes. I beg your pardon? Sure, it's got great original TV shows. But it also gives you access to family films for free. Wow. Awesome! So gather around, grab some popcorn, and let us do the rest. It'll be fun. Watch some of your favorite films anytime, anywhere. <laughs> with the free BYU TV app. I like it. Follow the ups and downs of elite young gymnasts in an exclusive behind the scenes look as they twist, flip, and bounce their way to the podium. See the commitment, effort, and mindset it takes for these competitors to rule their sport on Gym Stars, on BYU TV, or on the free app. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics.
BYU Sports Nation, always available on demand via the BYU TV and BYU radio apps. Or download the podcast. Just Google BYU Sports Nation podcast. And don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review the show. Today marks the beginning of the 2022 Masters, and as they like to say, it's a tradition unlike any other. Well, we at BYU Sports Nation would like to add one more tradition and would also like to submit the following promo for consideration by any network who would like to use it. The dawn of a new Power 5 day has finally arrived in Provo, Utah. Offering an abundance a validation and celebration. And furthering a pattern of dominance and victory. Over the Conference of Champions, BYU football beating the Pac-12, a tradition unlike any other. Well played, well done, and that is... (laughs) It's a it's a storyline we're not going to let go. <laughs> Never. I sh- honestly I should have wore the uh, the de facto Pac-12 champ shirt that I have. Oh. I should have worn that today. You should have. <laughs> so so BYU versus the Pac-12 this season, as we know, in football five and zero. So if you take baseball, men's basketball, football, women's basketball, soccer, softball, women's volleyball, twenty one five and one against the conference of champions. Good. It's not bad at all. All right. Our question of the day is the transfer portal, the key for BYU to be ready for the transition to the big 12. Let's get to some of your responses uh, at Roberts underscore uh, MN on Twitter. Not the entire key, but an essential part of the whole recruiting package, which still means getting the best prep talent along with now having to recruit the guys you already have to stay. That That's a major part of it is you still have to continue to recruit your guys. Exactly. And that's what we said, right? It's not going to be your backbone, your core, but you have to have it be an essential part of what you're doing to put together. Just fill in those missing pieces. Uh, on the gram, Tyson Hatch says, no question, we can get a lot of good recruits now, but transfers make or break teams in today's game. Like it's, Quick Fix sort of has a, a bad connotation to it, so I don't mean it in a negative way, but it is the way that if you have an immediate need, the transfer portal is where you almost have to go right now. These are players that you can go in uh, among the experience that they bring in. They're bringing leadership, which takes a little bit for some of the high school players, yeah. some maybe even JUCO transfers. But by going in and getting an experienced player from the college, you're also bringing in leadership, which some of these teams really need for BYU to fill some of those roles. Uh, let's get to our lead voice of the day. It is presented by Sundance Mountain Resort. Uh, is a response to uh, our where would you rather be uh, right now poll question, sort of. Uh, it comes from at dhub22. He says, "Hey Shep, where is Boise State going next?" Question mark to Disneyland with the rest of us, of course. Yeah, of course. Here we go. Look, I still feel like Disneyland is the answer. It's my choice. It is Kristen's choice. It is the choice of BYU head coach Kalani Sitake because he's going there uh, on Friday. But so let's check our poll question. Where would you rather be right now? And it's interesting. Twitter and Instagram are the exact opposites of each other. Right now on Twitter, the Masters has the lead at 56.9%. Disneyland at 43.1%. But on Instagram, Disneyland at 57%. And the Masters at 43%. So honestly, Kristen, what this is telling me, the people on Instagram are actually being truthful. And I'm more on Instagram, so I'm going to go with the Instagram. There you go. Let's let's hold that one true. All right. Today's Rise and Shout Out is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. And it's going to go to Mike Weir, the 2003 Masters champion. He is uh, plus one through 15 holes in the opening round at the Masters. Our thanks to today's guests, Kalani Satake and Jennifer Rockwood. The conversation continues 24-7 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Use the hashtag BYU Sports Nation. For Kristen, I'm Jason. Shout out to Michael Rucker. Go Cougs.